with Square, you seem to have got lots of funding on board, um, and it seemed sort of from the face of it that you're very much in charge still. Uh, in my experience, that's quite hard, small startup, uh, but big funds on board. How do you go about um, attracting funding and then managing your investors after you've secured it? I think the, um, the, the thing that's always worked for me is realizing that uh, your, your investors are, um, first and foremost, I always want to go to anyone that I, I want to work with uh, with something to show. And it was really important to us before we talked to any investors on the Twitter side that we actually had people using the service in, 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 in some, at some scale. And on the Square side that we actually had a working prototype. And at Square we had really seven merchants when we actually went to raise money. Uh, but we had a working prototype that people were actually using. And uh, if people can't see it and feel it, it's very, very hard to, to sell. And I, I don't want to just go and tell people this is going to be the biggest thing ever. I want to I be able to show that and uh, have them feel it and walk away feeling that as well. So, so that's first and foremost is uh, have something to show um, and so that they can actually feel it and start making it a part of their story uh, as well and feel like they have ownership over it. And then second is the realization, like, I always kind of uh, approach this as, like, this is a, this is a, if, if we take money from someone, this is kind of like hiring someone that we can never fire, we can never get rid of, right? So that means, do we really want to work with this person? Is this person going to be someone that really pushes us, pushes us in the way that we need to be pushed? And, uh, and you can tell that very, fairly quickly in that first week of pitching Square, Got a lot of people who um, said, you know, okay, great. We don't have any questions. We'll get back to you in about 30 minutes, probably with a, with a term sheet. And I said, I don't want a term sheet, um, especially if you're not asking any questions, because they asked no questions during, during the pitch. And that means if, if they're on our board, that they're actually not going to be uh, all that constructive in terms of really asking the tough questions and making sure that we're uh, you know, we're not just in our own bubble, but they're looking outside. That is the role of the board, is to, is to look outside and, and bring all their insight and wisdom to us so that we can help guide the, guide the company. And, uh, and that second week, we got a lot of tough questions, and, and that's what I love, because I know if I'm getting tough questions in the pitch, I'm going to get tough questions in the boardroom as well, and not just the boardroom, but every week. I mean, Vinod emails me once a week about have you thought about this? Are you doing this? And you know, um, I know this person. Can I make an introduction here? And uh, it's just very, very useful. So I'm looking for someone who I, I just love working with. And uh, I think you you have to set a very, very high bar. It's not just about money or the firm. It's about the individual that you're ultimately going to work with. And uh, people ask me all the time, like, you know, what firms would would you suggest I go pitch? I'm like. Find, find the people that you really want to work with in those firms, and if there's someone that, that really, you know, just really resonates with you and, and, you love, and you love the idea of working with them, focus on them, and um, if, it, if it tests out to be, to be the case, great. But uh, I think um, you, you have to kind of treat it as like, I'm adding this person to my team. And Square was, um, was a little bit different because one of the things that I stated to all the investors in the board meeting and, and, and folks who might join the board is like, look, this is not going to be a stress-free company. Like, there is so much interest in, in commerce and payments, and there's going to be a ton of competition in the future. We're, we're very early right now, but there's going to be a ton of competition in the future. And uh, uh, not a lot of people uh, want to work in payments because it's perceived as being slow and you have to work with these banking partners which aren't the fastest moving organizations in the world and people are trying to steal money from you all the time. So um, this is not a place that you know it's going to be stress free so I need to know that you will actually have a, a level head in times of in times of crisis because it's going to be very easy for us to see something and then react quickly and if we constantly react to something then we're actually building someone else's roadmap and we're not fulfilling our own vision. And I want to make sure that we stay calm, cool, collected uh, in that, as a board and as an investor group and that you trust the folks with the most context to do the work. And, and that is the folks in the company. 
Um, and I just made sure that everyone, everyone knew that. And if they didn't like that, then don't invest. And, uh, and some, people, some people walked because of that. And that was great, great for me uh, because uh, that meant I didn't have to deal with that later on.